Ah, thank you very much, Pastor Lance, for making me cry at the beginning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's so good to see you all on this wonderful Sabbath day. And so good to hear the story of Matthew and Emily again. I tell you, the title of the sermon is God is in control. And God was definitely in control when he put those two together. God knows exactly what he's doing. And he does all kinds of amazing things for each and every one of us. So this is a wonderful blessed Sabbath. We're having baptisms today. And I just want to congratulate Matthew and Emily. I love you both dearly. So today, thank you, Devrissa, De Devancia, sorry about that, for reading our scripture reading, one of my favorites, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. It is one that I love dearly, but it's one that is not easily kept. It's not by me anyway. I can't speak for everywhere, everyone else. But I tend to trust in the Lord but there are times when I trust in myself more. And when I trust in myself, when I don't heed the warning of the Holy Spirit, when I don't listen to that still small voice that's talking to me, and believe me, I hear it, but in my selfish way, I want to do what I want to do. And so I totally ignore it and do exactly what I wanna do and that causes so many problems. It's so much better when we listen to the Holy Spirit and we obey the Holy, Holy Spirit. It's better when we trust in the Lord and follow the Lord. So in, in my preparing for this, because as most of you know, thank you all for praying for me. I am not a preacher not one of my gifts. Loving people <clears throat> is a gift. Thank you, God, for that gift. Thank you for all of you. I love you all. But as I prepare for this, I started thinking about the things in life that we go through. And some things we bring upon ourselves, as I was talking about myself. Other things we don't. Other things happen to us through no fault of our own. And so it brought me to the times that we're living in now, this time of COVID. We are actually living in very troubling times. There are things happening now that I have never seen happen before. For those of you who don't know, I am 63 years young. Yes, young, 63 years young. And I've never seen the whole world locked down before. This is a first. COVID is wreaking havoc in everyone's life. Everyone has been touched by it. Whether you work in the healthcare system, whether you're a first responder, an essential personnel, if you have a friend or a relative who has contracted the virus, or someone who is in the hospital for other reasons, <clears throat> whether you have a person who has died from the virus or otherwise, these are very trying times. You can't visit your loved one in the hospital. You can't visit your loved one in the nursing home. You can't have the funerals like you used to have. We have people who are home with their loved ones, married couples who never had to spend this much time alone together. They're finding out they really don't want to stay married because they're having so many problems being together for such a long period of time. This is where we really need to trust God. This is where we really need to come together with one another and pray because Satan loves to tear the families apart. He hates anything that God instituted and God instituted marriage, one of his first things after the Sabbath and creation of things. But marriages are failing, 
families are going at one another. And of course, the Bible tells us these things are going to happen. It actually says they will. And they are happening. We have people who are trying to teach their children from home via computer. And the lessons today are nothing like the lessons before. Math today is even different from when I learned math. So I am so thankful, thank you, Jesus, that I have no children that I have to teach at home. We have grandparents raising grandchildren. We have sons and daughters who we love dearly, who we want to be in the church, who are not in the church, and we pray for them. We have siblings who we're praying for. We have all manner of things going on today. And those who are in the sanctuary, if you look around, you all have masks on. For those of us at home, we're on Zoom. By the way, Zoom is one of my new best friends. I love Zoom. I get to see lots of people, and it's a wonderful thing. We have all kinds of things going on on the West Coast. There are lots of fires going on. They're, they're burning uncontrollably. We're used to fires being there, but nothing, nothing like it is now. We have hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes and floods and climate changes. It, it's just unreal. We have a lot of racial tension and homelessness and Oh, God bless our government. They need much, much prayer. Let's keep them in prayer. But we are going through a lot of things in this day and age. And in the midst of all these things, while we feel as though life is spiraling out of control, we can be sure that our God is in control. He's in control of everything no matter what we're going through. We serve a God who takes good care of his children. Therefore, no matter what we are going through, remember, he loves you and he cares for you and he's there for you. Philippians 4, 7 reads, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We need not despair or fear because we serve a God who is in control. Trust God and realize that he can put us through every difficulty that is put in our path. He will get us through it. He knows what's coming. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows the decisions we're going to make. And sometimes we think God is surprised <laughs> because of the things we do. God's not surprised. He knew we were going to do it before we did it. We surprise ourselves sometimes because we don't realize that we can make those kinds of decisions. And actually, sometimes we look at other people and we say, hmm, if I was in that situation, I wouldn't have never done that. There's no way in the world I could have done that. But guess what? You can end up in the very same situation as someone else and make the very same decision. We don't know what we will do in any given situation. That's why we always need to trust God. We always need to have him first and foremost in everything we do, everything we say, everything we think. He is the best friend we could ever have. Second Timothy 1, 7 reads, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We have power, y'all. God has given us power, he's given us love, and he's given us a sound mind. And we need to follow him because we are his disciples. We talked about discipleship last night. We are God's disciples and we know what it entails. And we wanna grab onto that and hold onto it 
and live our lives accordingly. Trust in the Lord. He knows exactly what you are personally going through. Everybody else may not know. We may be able to keep up a, a nice front and everybody think all is well. But in this day and age, everyone is going through something. Some people are going through small things. Some people are going through huge things. I, I received calls yesterday from people who are really, really going through things that we are definitely keeping in prayer. Our very own Vincent lost his older son yesterday. It's hard when you lose someone, but it's even harder to lose a child or a parent. My, my daughter, Pat, she calls me Mama Susan too, Pastor. She lost her mother. We're praying for them. We know that God is going to get them through. It's not easy right now, and it's very hard. And they need us. They need us to support them. The Holy Spirit will comfort them as only the Spirit, Holy Spirit can. But they need us as well. That's why God has us. Listen. I, I can tell you some things that I have done <laughs> in this lifetime that were totally against God and the Holy Spirit. Didn't listen. Stubborn, hard-headed, people, people telling me the right things to do. My parents, not even listening to my parents. At the age of 19, I was so totally head over heels in love with someone. And I decided I'm getting married. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me clearly. I can say that today. <laughs> because, you know, they say hindsight is twenty twenty. I can tell you the Holy Spirit told me numerous times, showed me numerous things of why this should not happen. My very own parents did not come to my wedding because they were against it. But guess what I did? Went ahead and married anyway. And that was in 1976. And some of you here aren't even that old, but yes, that was in 1976. And from that point to this point, I am still suffering the consequences of that decision of not following the Holy Spirit. But it has taught me a lot and I have become closer to God and now I know that when the Holy Spirit speaks, I listen. I trust in the Lord because I know God only wants what is best for me. I have no idea what I want. I have no idea what is best for me. But God knows. And when we follow him, life will be so much easier. Not saying we're not going to have trials and tribulations because we are. That's told in the Bible but we'll be able to get through them better because we'll know he's right there beside us. And by the way, the one great thing that came from my marriage, my younger son, Levi, those of you who know I have two sons, I had James when I got married. That was another big mistake that I made, but James was not a mistake. I love my sons dearly and my grandchildren and my great grandchildren. There's four generations of me. Look how good God is to me. For someone who didn't even listen to him and did my own thing. God is in control. Isaiah 65, 24 states, and it shall come to pass that before, we, before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. I am so thankful to God that he is always watching and always listening. He is waiting for us with open arms. When we come to him, he is ready for us. God is in control. God's holy word is full of stories where he did what seemed like the impossible. But that is only when you underestimate God. Nothing is impossible for God. Think about Noah. Noah taught for 120 years. He tried to tell people, listen, a flood is coming. 
There's going to be water coming from the sky. You need to get into this ark so you don't drown. You know, God wants to save us. Come on, get in the ark. People made fun of him. They taunted him. They didn't want to help him. Noah followed God. They had never seen rain before. They wonder why he's building this great big ark. They're not listening to what he's saying, and they're definitely not listening to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit was trying to get their attention as well. So when the 120 years were over and the rain started coming down, Genesis 7.13 tells us, in the self same day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Jeff, Jeff, Jephthah, the sons of Noah, Noah's wife, the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. Only eight people entered the ark. Only eight people were saved. And that's because they listened to God. Let's think about Daniel. I love the story of Daniel. Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they determined that they were going to follow God no matter what. Nebuchadnezzar decided that, you know, everyone had to pray to him. And Daniel, in, in, in chapter 3, it says that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they decided they're praying to God, not praying to, him, to that statue that he made. And, you know, for some of us, we might have pretended like we were going to kneel down. But they stood strong. They stood straight. They did not bow at all, which got them thrown into the fiery furnace. But guess what? Jesus came into the fiery furnace with them. The people who drew them in, Nebuchadnezzar made it seven times hotter than usual. The people who bound them up and drew them in, they died. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were walking around in the fire with Jesus. When they came out, you couldn't even smell smoke on them. God is in control. He is a wonderful God. And Daniel himself, they tried to trap him, but he still prayed three times a day with his window open so people could see him. He was thrown in the lion's den. God closed the mouths of the lions. God is in control. The same things he does for the people in the Bible, he does for us today. Think about Lot. Lot, his wife, his two daughters were the only four who got out of Sodom and Gomorrah before God totally destroyed it. Unfortunately, Lot's wife decided that she would turn and look back, which turned her into a pillar of salt. So Lot and his two daughters were the only ones who survived. God is in control, and he knows his people, and he talks to us through the Holy Spirit. Whatever situation you're in, whatever you're going through, talk to the Lord. Talk to our loving Savior. Know that he is there for you. And things may not happen right away, but things will happen. You can bet on that. They may not happen the way you want them to happen, but things will happen. Think about Joseph. Joseph went through a lot. Joseph's brothers didn't like him. Well, Jacob made them jealous of him because he was the favorite. They threw him in a well. They were going to leave him there to die. Then they decided, oh, no, we'll, we'll take him out of the well and we'll sell him to the merchants. He ended up being a servant in Potiphar's house, and then Potiphar's wife decided to seduce him. But Joseph had a heart for God. He lived for God. And no matter what he went through, he trusted in God. So he ran, ended up in prison for a few years. But then he was remembered and they brought him out of prison to interpret the dream of Pharaoh. And when he did that, he became ruler over Egypt. 
second in command next to Pharaoh. He went from being thrown in a well by his brothers to being a servant, to being a prisoner, to being a ruler. God is in control. God knew all these things were going to happen. And each thing that happened brought him closer to God. And when his brothers finally showed up during the famine, that must have been a lot of turmoil he went through. He was, he was mean to them at first, but he was struggling. He was struggling with the love he had for them and with the revenge he wanted to have for them. And some of us struggle with that same thing. Know that God can take care of that. God is in control. Because eventually he broke down. He told his brothers who he was. He loved them dearly. And the, the father and his younger brother were brought there and everybody became a wonderful, happy family. Believe me when I tell you, God knows all. He's there for us. He never leaves us nor forsakes us. When you read that footprints prayer, where you see one set of footprints, that's when God is carrying you. He is always there for us. And for those of you who have never read the story of Joseph, you can find that in Genesis chapters 37 through 50. It's kind of like a soap opera. There's a lot of stuff in the Bible that better than watching a movie, better than TV. If you don't read your Bible, I suggest you open it up and enjoy. Our God is in control and he loves us so very much. First Peter 5, 7 reads, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. He wants to hear from us. He is waiting for us to talk to him in prayer. He is never too busy and no care is too small or too big. The more we begin to communicate, communicate with God, the more we will trust him. And the more we trust him, the better we will be able to deal with the things of this world because we will listen to and obey the Holy Spirit. Romans 8.28 reads, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. We serve a God who loves us so very much. He sent Jesus to die for each and every one of us. John 3.16, which everyone knows, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So always remember that you are loved more than you could ever dream, and that God is in control. God bless you all, and thank you so much for listening.